Hi, everybody. It's the Prez. The Prez, Prez, Prez. And that's my daughter, Maddie. She gets a real kick out of my nickname. Do it again. No. No. She's camera shy. The Prez, Prez, Prez. Okay, go away. Metallica, how good are they? You're watching the NFL Presidential Opening Line Report. We're going to take apart every game on the board. We're also going to talk a little bit of Game of Thrones on this episode. But before we get into it, let's leave it to Metallica. Oh, how good is this music? I went 2-1 and one in NFL last week. I uh, lost on Washington at home against Minnesota, but I did call the under in the Jacksonville game, as well as the under in the Tampa Bay game. I got five plays up for this Sunday. It's probably my favorite card of the year. I actually like 15 games. Everything is jumping out to me this week, and you'll hear about it uh, as I take every game apart. Uh, but I have five games up for you all that I'm betting on this Sunday, and you can get them for $15 if you go to wagertalk.com and use the promo code NFL15. That's NFL15. You get all five of my NFL plays for Sunday for $15. Uh, as well, guys, I really appreciate the comments on uh, YouTube on these videos. I don't care if you're mean, if you're nice, if you don't like my hat. If you want me to change, wear a suit, beat me up, compliment me, just make comments, and I promise you I will respond to most. You can also uh, catch me on Twitter, Prez Wager Talk. That's Prez Wager Talk, my Twitter handle. Uh, before we get into the NFL card, I want to uh, talk about Game of Thrones. This is, an, uh, this is a prediction show, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to predict the ending of Game of Thrones. The second last episode will end with Cersei killing our heroine Daenerys. It will also end with Jon Snow getting killed by the Night King. That will finish both arcs of our hero and our heroine, and will also turn the world into a tailspin. The amount of media and press that will flip out over such an ending will be enormous and set up a perfect finale the following week. And in that finale... What we're going to see is we're going to see Arya revenge Jon Snow's death, save the world, and kill the Night King, and finish her arc beautifully. She's my favorite character, by the way. And we will see Jaime kill Cersei to finish that ridiculous incestual story and to put Jaime in uh, good stead. Who will end up being the king, you ask? Our favorite little man, Peter Dinklage. We'll find out this year that he's a Targaryen, and he will end up the King of Kings. Now let's get into the NFL card, if you will. Uh, what I want to do is take it apart top to bottom. So we're going to start with the Thursday night card. Tennessee going into Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is minus five and a half. The over and under is 42 on this game. And you know, it's funny. I was telling Carmine Bianco, by the way, make sure to watch... Uh, the soccer, the presidential soccer video, me and Carmine, we just put it up at youtube.com. It's actually really entertaining. I think you guys will get a real kick out of it. Uh, I was telling Carmine last week uh, that Indiana, that Pittsburgh has a tendency every three or four games when they go on the road to lay a total egg. And we saw that against Indianapolis last week where they scratched out a victory against a very bad football team. I think this week we're going to see Pittsburgh's offense come into full flight. And I like Tennessee's offense as well. I don't want to touch the side in this game, but I'm going to play over the total of 42 points. Next up is Detroit going into Chicago. Detroit is minus two and a half. They came out at minus three. There's clearly some money coming in on the Bears, and I don't understand why. The Bears couldn't beat a bad Green Bay team at home last week, and I see no reason why they would beat the Lions here. The Lions are in must-win mode, probably so for the rest of the season, and I think they go into Chicago and win this game handily. I like Detroit minus 2.5, and, and I lean on under the total of 41.5 points. Next up is Kansas City going into, the, into New York to play the Giants. The Giants are a terrible football team. Right there with Cleveland is potentially the worst team in the league. 
Kansas City, however, are really struggling of late and struggling to score. I told you guys all last week in my video that uh, Pittsburgh at minus 10 against Indianapolis was too big a number, and I feel exactly the same way in this Kansas City game. I'm going to take the Giants at plus 10 points. Next up is Tampa Bay going into Miami. Miami opened up at minus three. They're now minus one and a half. Uh, I actually like Miami regardless of who plays quarterback for this Tampa Bay team. We saw Miami struggle against Carolina this past week. And frankly, they have the worst offense in all of football right now. But Tampa Bay is really struggling too. Yes, they beat the Jets, but they beat the Jets. They, they got the Jets at the right time and both teams couldn't move the ball at all. I like Miami in the showdown in Florida. I think they win this game by somewhere between 7 and 10 points. Try to get themselves back in the race because the AFC is wide open from a wild card position. I mean, Buffalo is still in wild card position. Next, we've got Baltimore minus two going into Green Bay. And again, Baltimore right in the thick of things. They got to win this game. Can they? I don't know. This Baltimore team is like uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Uh, I just cannot make heads or tails on which one will show up. Green Bay, on the other hand, I don't have faith in at all. I'm going to play the under in this football game, under the total of 37 and a half points. I see this game being 16, 13, 14, 10, somewhere in that era. It's going to be a snooze fest. Then we've got the Rams, 7 and 2, an outstanding football team going into Minnesota to play the Vikings. The Minnesota Vikings are minus 2 here. And interestingly, if you look deep into the numbers with the Rams, this team has really not played a lot of great teams. They lost against Seattle, and they're beating all the crap. With that said, I don't think I could bet the side in this game. I, I, I don't know yet who the Rams really are, and we're talking about hard-earned money, so I'd rather wait. I do lean on under the total of 46 points, and I am very impressed with the Vikings right now, especially Case Keenum. I don't think Teddy Bridgewater is going to get back into this foot in back in on this team, maybe on another team next year. But I think Case Keenan has wrapped up the starter's job. Arizona going into Houston, and we've got this line at a pick em. I don't know what to do here. It, it, we, Arizona could be playing their third string quarterback. Tom Samage for Houston is a disaster. We have to play under the total of 39 points in this game. Both teams have no choice but to run. This game shouldn't be on TV, but we're going to take under the total of 39. Now we've got Cleveland at plus seven hosting the Jags. The Jags were lucky to beat San Diego last week. If it wasn't for their defense, they might have only scored twice last week against San Diego. I can't lay seven and a half with the Jags when they're struggling to score, and I'm certainly not going to give Cleveland my money. They just don't deserve it. The play in this game is under 37 and a half points. Now we've got Washington going into New Orleans. Washington looked great two weeks ago in Seattle, and then they laid an egg against Minnesota last week at home. New Orleans looks like they could be the best team in all of football. Their defense is great. Their offense is great. They played outstanding in Buffalo on grass in mediumly cold weather. Uh, with that said, minus eight is too big a number. Washington can score. The back door is wide open. I like Washington plus the eight points, and I like over the total of 51. Next, we've got Buffalo and the Los Angeles Chargers. Um, I'm going to play under the total in this game. I'm really struggling with a side here. I, I, I just don't believe in either of these teams, but I do believe in their defenses and I do believe that San Diego under the total is the play in every game that they play in. So we're going to go with San Diego under the total of 44 points. Next, we've got Cincinnati. Oh, we forgot to have an interlude of music before we get into the late games. I've already jumped into one. So let's, let's have a moment, if you will. I haven't played Santana yet this year one of the most underrated guitar players in the world and their per his percussion group i mean listen to how beautiful these bongos and drums are some soul sacrifice by santana
we got Cincinnati going into Denver. Uh, two really bad football teams, and Denver has really hit rock bottom. With that said, I like to play teams that were good, uh, unlike Cleveland, and now are, are just having a real tough time. I think they've hit rock bottom, and I think they have a bounce back week. Um, like dental floss on Dolly Parton, Denver covers this number. Next up is, I think, the game of the week. New England and Oakland. Oakland's played outstanding the last two weeks. Uh, they, well, the last two games. They're coming off of a bye this week. And New England on the road, really struggling to keep teams out of the end zone. They don't deserve to be a minus six and a half. I like Oakland plus the six and a half in this game. And I also like over the total of 52 points. Our Sunday night game is Philadelphia against Dallas. Dallas looked terrible last week against Atlanta. Everybody talks about how different they are without Zeke. It's more like how different they are without their left tackle. Eight sacks by Atlanta against Dallas, six by one guy. One thing we know, teams can make adjustments on the offensive line. I think Dallas does make an adjustment here. And I like Dallas plus the three against Philadelphia in an absolute season ending or making game for the Cowboys. I also like over the total of 48 points. Dallas simply cannot lose this football game. Our Monday night game is a doozy. Atlanta plus three in Seattle. And we saw Atlanta play some great football last week. Their defense was outstanding and they were able to move the ball. And more importantly, they had great field position last week um, against the Cowboys. Seattle, on the other hand, coming off of a terrible game against Arizona, albeit they won, and an even worse game against Washington at home. I don't think Seattle is the same. Earl Thomas, potentially the best safety ever, might be out of this game, and we already know Sherman is. Uh, I got to take Atlanta plus the three here, and I like over the total of 45 points. That's it for the presidential address. Um, make sure to like the video Make sure to share the video, make sure to comment on the video, uh, and make sure to visit us at wagertalk.com. Also use the promo code NFL15 for my NFL 5-pack that's up at Wagertalk. Uh, let's leave you with a little bit of Metallica, and thanks so much, everybody. Catch me on Twitter, Prez Wagertalk. I think you all know what kind of music I like. See you later.